This is the lecture for Sarah Protasi's loving people for who they are, even when they don't love you back. So there's just one topic to talk about, and that's uh, qualitative and numerical identity. So on page 220, she's talking about uh, objections to a certain view of love, and she says, a related objection is the suitability objection, or sorry, substitutability objection, which claims that the property view is committed to saying that the lover has the same reasons for loving a certain person and for loving that person's doppelganger. But, the objection goes, most of us intuitively think that it would be irrational to transfer our love to someone who is qualitatively identical to our beloved. So that won't make much sense until you read uh, the stuff coming before it, but this idea of a doppelganger, somebody who's sort of like a perfect duplicate of somebody else, brings up this idea of qualitative identity, and that gives us an opportunity to talk about this and the other kind of identity. So in philosophy, when we talk about identity and things being equal to each other, and when we use uh, something like, oops, <laughs> something like the equals sign, there's two ways that we can understand this, or two main ways that we can talk about identity. So the first sort of way of understanding identity is qualitative identity, and that's the sort that Protasi is mentioning here. And so two things are qualitatively identical when, uh, or to the degree that, they have the same qualities, or the same properties, or the same features, or the same uh, characteristics. So for instance, here's my left hand and here is my right hand, qualitatively, they are very similar to each other. So my left hand and my right hand have most the same features. They have the same number of bones, they have the same number of muscles, they're both hooked up to my body, uh, they're both sort of the same color and the same size and the same weight. So they share a lot of qualities in common, they share a lot of properties in common. Qualitatively, are they entirely identical? No, there are some differences. So they're mirror images of each other. Um, anything else? I don't know. There's probably some small other qualitative identities. Maybe there's a different number of hairs on my left hand and my right hand. So qualitatively, they're not 100% identical, but they're, I don't know, 90% identical. Um, two black cats that are the same size, the same age, would be qualitatively very similar to each other, almost identical. Identical twins are qualitatively often quite similar to each other. And the example uh, Protasi is giving here of somebody's doppelganger, sort of, we imagine just duplicating somebody, uh, making a perfect copy of them. Qualitatively, they would be basically exactly identical. So she says qualitatively identical to talk about sort of 100% qualitative identity. You and your doppelganger share a hundred percent qualitative identity. What are things that are qualitatively not very identical? Uh, well, my hand and uh, this water bottle. They're almost not, they're, there's almost no qualitative identity between them. They do have some similarities. They're both made of matter. They're both in this room. Uh, they both weigh, uh, they're not too different in weight or size. So qualitatively, they're a little bit identical, but mostly they're very different. Uh, the planet Jupiter in my left hand, qualitatively very, very different, almost no qualities in common. Uh, the number four in my left hand, qualitatively maybe even more different. So qualitative identity comes in degrees, and things can be more or less qualitatively identical. The other kind of identity that philosophers talk about is numerical identity. So numerical identity is not about sharing qualities in common. Uh, and it's not a matter of degree. Numerical identity is a yes or no question. So when we ask, is uh, x numerically identical to y, we're just, that's going to be yes or no. And when we talk about numerical identity, we're talking about something being the same thing, exactly the same thing as something else. Uh, or the technical way to put this is that
So we say numerical identity is the property that holds between a thing and itself and nothing else. So everything is numerically identical to itself and not numerically identical to anything else. So I, I don't know, it's, it, it's a complicated way of describing it, but it's a very simple idea, which is just that something is numerically identical to itself because there's only one thing that is the same thing as that thing. Uh, we call this numerical identity because you can imagine if I'm counting things and I give each thing a different number, so I'm trying to count how many hands I or how many fingers I have, and I say here's one finger, two fingers, three fingers, four fingers, five fingers. Notice they're all numerically different fingers. None of these fingers is equal to each other, so that's why I give them each a different number when I'm counting. Qualitatively, they're actually very similar to each other. So qualitatively, this finger and this finger are almost the same. But numerically, they're completely distinct. They're two entirely separate fingers. So numerical identity, at least on the surface, doesn't have anything to do with qualitative identity. So for instance, in this doppelganger example, when there's somebody who's a perfect duplicate of you, qualitatively, they're exactly the same. But numerically, if we're counting how many people we have, we count one for you and then two for the doppelganger, right? You each get a separate number. So you have two numerically different, two, mer two numerically distinct things, even though you have two qualitatively identical things. You can also have numerical identity or qualitative identity is sort of gone or changing a lot. So for instance, take, how, uh, take you, uh, imagine yourself when you were two years old, and take you right now, and ask how qualitatively identical are you to yourself when you were two years old? And the answer is probably very little. There's not a lot that you have in common with your two-year-old self. You have a different personality now, you have a different uh, size, you have a different shape, uh, you, you do all sorts of different things, you're in a different location perhaps, uh, <laughs> maybe not. Um, so qualitatively there's been a lot of change in you, so qualitatively there's not much similarity between you at two and you right now. But numerically, are you identical to you at two years old? Probably yes, it's the same person. So um, if X is you at two years old and Y is you right now, if this equals sign is numerical identity, we would say yes, X equals Y, you're the same person. If we're counting how many people there are, we don't say there's two people, one you at two years old and two you right now. We say, no, there's one person who just grew up over time. So that's the difference between qualitative and numerical identity. It's not super duper crucial for uh, this article, so I should have mentioned that before the video. You can watch this after the reading too. Um, but it is just an important idea in philosophy, and it's good to be clear about the distinction between the two kinds of identity.